Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. And if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And we have everything from hats, snapbacks, hoodies, everything for you to dress outside of the box, add something new to your closet. Okay. Today's episode is very important. The reason why I made this episode because social media could be so confusing and the election is coming and it's very, it's, you know, you will be surprised how many people are still confused on who they're voting for if they're even voting. So what I did today, I did a little breakdown. If you're having a problem choosing between Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, I'm going to give you a little breakdown of as far as this coming election and whoever gets in office. Let's get it. Okay, so today we're diving into one of the biggest decisions facing us as voters in this up and coming election. I'll be breaking down the key differences between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, giving you a straightforward look at what each candidate is pushing. We're gonna cover the pros and the cons, the policies and what each party really represents when it comes down to voting. Okay, this isn't about who's right or who's wrong. So you can make a well-informed decision when it's time for you to vote. It's all about understanding where each candidate stands and what that could mean for our country. Let's get it. Make no mistake, we will win. I can't believe it's a close race. Okay. okay, so if you was confused, here it is in detail what both parties are pushing. Okay, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump both represent different visions for America. Harris, running as a Democrat, is emphasizing unity, social justice, and health care reform. Her campaign often focuses on strengthening public programs and addressing climate change. Her critics argue her policies could lead to more government control and higher taxes, but her supporters see her as a fresh voice for progress and equality. On the other side, Donald Trump representing the Republican Party is focusing on economic growth, reducing regulations, and maintaining traditional values. He promotes a strong national defense and fewer government controls on businesses. Critics worry the approach benefits corporations over everyday people, but supporters argue his policies create jobs and protect personal freedoms. Conflict. Mr. President, it has been the position of the Biden administration that we must defend Ukraine from Russia, from Vladimir Putin, to defend their sovereignty, their democracy, that it's in America's best interest to do so, arguing that if Putin wins, he may be emboldened to move even further into other countries. You have said you would solve this war in 24 hours. You said so just before the break tonight. How exactly would you do that? And I want to ask you a very simple question tonight. Do do you want Ukraine to win this war? I want the war to stop. I want to save lives that are being uselessly, people being killed by the millions. It's the millions. It's so much worse than the numbers that you're getting, which are fake numbers. Look, we're in for 250 billion or more because they don't ask Europe, which is a much bigger beneficiary to getting this thing done than we are. They're in for $150 billion less because Biden and you don't have the courage to ask Europe like I did with NATO. They paid billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars when I said, either you pay up or we're not going to protect you anymore. So that's maybe one of the reasons they don't like me as much as they like weak people. But you take a look at what's happening. We're in for 250 to 275 billion. They're into 100 to 150. They should be forced to equalize. With that being said, I want to get the war settled. I know Zelensky very well, and I know Putin very well. I have a good relationship, and they respect your president, okay? They respect me. They don't respect Biden. How would you respect him? Why? For what reason? He hasn't even made a phone call in two years to Putin. Hasn't spoken to anybody. They don't even try and get it. That is a war that's dying to be settled. I will get it settled before I even become president. If I win, when I'm president-elect, and what I'll do is I'll speak to one, I'll speak to the other, I'll get them together, that war would have never happened. And in fact, when I saw Putin after I left, unfortunately left because our our country has gone to hell 
But after I left, when I saw him building up soldiers, he did it after I left. I said, oh, he must be negotiating. It must be a good, strong point of negotiation. Well, it wasn't, because Biden had no idea how to talk to him. He had no idea how to stop it. And now you have millions of people dead, and it's only getting worse, and it could lead to World War III. Don't kid yourself, David. We're playing with World War III, and we have a president that we don't even know if he's... Where is our president? We don't even know if he's a president. And, and just to clarify they here... They threw him out of a campaign like a dog. We don't even know. Is he our president? But we have a president... Mr. President... ...that doesn't know he's alive. Your time is up. It would, just to clarify in the question, do you believe it's in the U.S. best interest for Ukraine to win this war, yes or no? I think it's the U.S. best interest to get this war finished and f just get it done. All right. Negotiate a deal because we have to stop all of these human lives from being destroyed. I want to take this to Vice President Harris. I want to get your thoughts on uh, support for Ukraine in this moment, but also as commander in chief, if elected, how would you deal with Vladimir Putin? And would it be any different from what we're seeing from President Biden? Well, first of all, it's important to remind the former president, you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me. I believe the reason that Donald Trump says that this war would be over within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. And that's not who we are as Americans. Let's understand what happened here. Um, I actually met with Zelensky a few days before Russia invaded tried through force to change territorial boundaries to defy one of the most important international rules and norms, which is the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. And I met with President Zelensky. I shared with him American intelligence about how he could defend himself. Days later, I went to NATO's eastern flank, to Poland and Romania. And through the work that I and others did, we brought 50 countries together to support Ukraine in its righteous defense. And because of our support, because of the air defense, the ammunition, the artillery, the javelins, the Abrams tanks that we have provided, Ukraine stands as an independent and free country. If Donald Trump were president, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv right now. And understand what that would mean, because Putin's agenda is not just about Ukraine. Understand why the European allies and our NATO allies are so thankful that you are no longer president and that we understand the importance of the greatest military alliance the world has ever known, which is NATO, and what we have done to preserve the ability of Zelensky and the Ukrainians to fight for their independence. Otherwise, Putin would be sitting in Kyiv with his eyes on the rest of Europe, starting with Poland. And why don't you tell the 800,000 Polish Americans right here in Pennsylvania how quickly you would give up for the sake of favor and what you think is a friendship with what is known to be a dictator who would eat you for lunch. Each of these have different trade-offs and benefits. It's all up to you, not what social media is telling you, not what you see. It's all about what you feel that's best fit how you see the country in the future you guys can leave your if you have any if you're confused about anything else leave your comments down below if you have your choice and you know who's voting for if you already voted i already voted but if you already know who you voted for or who you're gonna vote for you can leave that down below if it's personal to you you don't have to and we can always talk about this on my morning show mondays wednesdays and fridays at 9 a.m love you guys Stay tuned. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.